Hey everyone, good morning. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit different with this video for it's day 10 and I didn't post on day 8 or day 9 and I thought well I could do a summary or I could <coughs> go each day individually. So what we're going to do is go each day individually. So this will be day 8 and if you want to continue in the series they're going to be three separate videos. So um, here we go. Day was very interesting because um, I'm really not 100% sure how I thought, felt about an incident that happened with day seven and I had the picture um, where I had a band-aid on this finger because I hurt myself. Um, and it was very interesting because um, a friend of mine on Facebook uh, commented and said, well, um, for the love of God in capital letters, take off the Band-Aid. And there were so many things that went through my mind when that happened. Um, it was like, oh, for the love of God, take off the Band-Aid, like shut up already. That was the first one. And I thought, well, that was interesting. And I don't understand why I would think like that. And then, um, but it did, it did, um, resonate for me that, uh, I have felt like that somewhere that, um, I know that in times where I felt that I talked too much, um, I don't know if I needed it at a time where I had to dominate the conversation. Um, uh, and I still get pushed back every once in a while that I, um, that I'm told that I talk too much and I thought, oh, Okay. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite interesting because I don't, I don't know if I do, or I don't know if I don't, but that, that came back, but that has been a resonating vibration that I have felt. So that's one way of looking at that. Um, there's also like something sarcastic. That's a, there's a sarcastic type of humor where, uh, if we were talking as friends about something like that, it would be something that you would say and that you would laugh at, but it's, um, <laughs> Oh, I would have, I would have said something like that. Like, um, right after, right when we were talking, where were we? It was when my brother died, just, I think when we, when we got to this, um, I can't remember where we said it, but anyway, I was talking to, to someone and it was right after my brother died and they wanted to talk about how, um, how did he get, like, how did this happen? How did he get there? I said, well, he went there by train and they thought it was really fun. They didn't think it was very funny, <laughs> but it was my, I don't know, dark, um, humorous way of looking at it because there wasn't very much feeling there, but it was, for me, it was, it was funny. <laughs> so it could have been something like that. But anyway, those feelings there brought vibrations up for me that were very fascinating because it, it, I didn't know what to do with them and I didn't know how to handle them. And shortly after that, my throat started to get scratchy and I've now been battling something with my lungs and my throat and I'm coughing. So I don't know if there's a voice that I'm trying to say or something that's happening, but I've been battling this cough for the last two nights and it's basically happened around the time that it was day seven and day seven I was very worried about what to do from that like do I continually do it for eight nine and ten or am I supposed to do it for 28 days or how long was I going to do it I didn't even know I didn't have a plan or what I was going to do because my thought of okay it takes 28 days to break a habit does it really take 28 days or is that just something that we've decided so I wasn't sure but I realized that I can't just drop off like that. And if the ones that are going to drop off are going to drop off because that's how, that's how we work. If it doesn't happen every day, then if it stops, the people that miss it, but if it goes on for too long, it's like, forget it. I'll go on to something else. So uh, <clears throat> I had to decide and I had to think, well, what am I supposed to do? Do I continue on or not? 
so I thought, okay, well, I'll continue on with the day and see what happens and see if I can just, I didn't know it. it did I want to talk about this or did anyone want to hear about this? I wasn't sure. So I thought, well, I'll do it for myself because there's going to be a time when I'm going to look back at this and realize that this was a very important part, a very important step of something. And I'm going to be very thankful that I documented this for myself as a memory. So I decided, okay, I'm going to continue on. And I was driving. I drove to Canada on Wednesday because I needed to um, do some errands up there. And I came through the, I went through the border just fine. And then when I came back, because I didn't go for anything that would be considered logical to the customs broker, or not the customs broker, the, the border guard, um, he thought I was doing something wrong. He automatically assumed that I did something wrong. And I thought, okay. And he, um, he, did a little like uh, search of my car or whatever and held me there for a couple of minutes. And then I went and I went through and it was really interesting because I realized that during that time I didn't, I didn't pick my fingers and it wasn't that I wasn't uncomfortable because I was to a degree because it was really odd that I was being interrogated because I was doing something different, but not wrong. And I realized that there are times in that my life when I was in that situation that I would pick and I didn't. So I thought, okay, that was, so there are times in my, in my experience with this, that there, I don't resort to that every single time. So if I can do it then, why can't I do it again? So, <clears throat> and I just realized that right now that I went through that. So driving through, I saw the most fascinating thing that had me really thinking about how I look at my situation and how I live. Um, I was talking to a really dear friend of mine, David, on the phone. And we were. I drove by and I saw a, sma a, a snapshot. And it's very interesting on how you can take a snapshot of something and it changes your perspective. Just that one perspective, that one shot shifts everything. Um, what I saw... And what I noticed, and that's what the thing was fascinating, is there was this this property, this domestic property. There was a house on the property. I didn't see the house, but I saw the front of the yard that made it look like there was a house there. But it, the house is deep enough, and I wasn't my in my perspective. Um, but there was a property there, and it, there was a road, a driveway that went in, but it wasn't the type of driveway that... Um, there was paving or that there was, um, it was one that just had the tracks. And if any of you that would know that they have the, just the tracks where the gravel has been and the mud has been replaced by rocks over and over and over again, but there's still grass in the center and there's still grass on the sides. So it wasn't a professionally done driveway. And, but I've had many, seen many yards that are like that. And for me, it works just as well. It was just this type of driveway. And on the driveway was a gate, and there was a gate there that had two um, swinging, yeah, just swinging gates, but that was it. And that was what, and it said, beware of dog, and I thought that was okay. But when I looked, I couldn't see, I couldn't see any fence. Like, it was like the gate was just standing there on the driveway, but there was no fence. And I didn't understand what that was supposed to stop. Like, I understand if you could get out and stop a car from coming in, but you you could walk around, you could drive around if you really wanted to go, because the bushes that were beside it, you could drive over them. You would not really hurt your car. You'd do more damage to the bush. That was the perspective that I got. And <clears throat> Pardon me, let me get a drink. And I looked at it and I thought, how was that keeping them safe? I didn't understand how that, how that to them, that was what would keep them safe. And I thought, 
how fascinating that for me, in the times where I haven't felt safe, that I would pick on myself and hurt myself. And I realized that we all have this, this part of ourselves where we want to feel safe. And I think that through this journey and through where I've been, there were many times I didn't feel safe. And yeah, there was, there, I had nightmares when I was a kid and they were bad. They were very bad. And, uh, and I can talk about them now and I don't have that vibration anymore. I can just look at it like a movie and go, yeah, I remember that. And I still haven't quite pieced it together what the, what it represented and maybe I should take a look at that now since I'm not so emotionally attached to it. But it used to terrorize me, something terrible, and I didn't feel safe. Um, I think this is, um, this is, it's, I started feeling safe right around the time that I was um, married to an older gentleman, Yvonne. And, uh, That's when I started to feel safe. And then there was a, a relationship afterwards where I did not. Um, but I, it was very interesting. That when I left that relationship, I became safe within myself. And that was probably the biggest, the biggest um, breakthrough for me was the becoming safe within myself. And there was a process that I went through with a friend of mine. And there's some further processes that I did with myself. And uh, I'm now safe within myself. And I guess that's where, when you start to begin that personal safety, where you just trust yourself that you're okay um, and that you're going to be okay and that you can, you can do this and you can move forward. And that's where it is, is the degree of safety. And these little things that we do to ourselves to, um, to give us our safety because hurting myself doesn't make me safe. And I realize that if, when I take care of those thoughts, when I start looking at the reasons and the, the thoughts behind why I do what I do, I increase my level of personal safety. And, and with that becomes a sense of relief that I'm okay. And so day eight, I looked at that and I realized that on what we do to make ourselves feel safe, and, I, and it was funny because I didn't have the answer to that until today. So I had to wait till day 10 to talk about day eight. Because I didn't, I remember, I was thinking about it. And I would said to my friend David on the phone, I should talk about that gate for day eight. Ah, it's day rhyme. That's great. Ah! <laughs> anyway, and um, <coughs> see, the cough. Oh, this is going to go away now. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and, oh my, and, um, that's what this is all about. And at that time, I realized that I was going to do something for myself that was different. And I was going to go through with the manicure and I had phone, I was talking about it with a girlfriend at work and I booked the appointment. I went for the manicure and the manicure in that experience was a whole nother experience. And that was really good too. So if you would like to, we can continue on with the next video. If not, have a great day, everyone. Bye.